الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أي للسلام أي للسلام أي للفلاح أي للفلاح الله أكبر الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستحدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير قال الله تعالى في الكتاب العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاذ فوزا عظيما رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد I come from a very sports specific background I grew up playing sports I was very active and I remember one year when I was younger somebody gave me an analogy to try to help me understand Ramadan because we understand everything when we're growing up and even when we're older through things that are relevant and applicable to our lives. Things that we understand, things that we can relate to, things that we can take home. And I remember some years ago when I was a teenager, somebody explained to me the essence of what really Ramadan is. Because I didn't understand what all this praying and all this Quran and fasting and behaving good for these 30 days and what it really meant. Because when you're growing up, you do things because your parents tell you. You don't really have an understanding of things. And I remember this brother giving me an analogy, and he said, you play a lot of sports. And he said, think of Ramadan as this skills camp. I understood what a skills camp was because I played sports. A skills camp was outside of the season of when you were actually playing a sport. So like the NBA Finals are happening right now. All year, they practice and they play just to be the best that they can be for these seven games because they want to win. So I was told that Ramadan is a skills camp where you enter the month, although it's not the season, you enter the month, and you work hard to perfect your trait. You work hard to perfect your skills. You work hard to learn new things that you didn't know before. And the skills that you already possess, you become sharper in them. So you learn how to manage your time wisely. You learn a specific trait or a specific skill that would enhance you once game time started. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. So I played football, and when I went to the skills camp, I wanted to have better agility. I wanted to have more speed. I wanted to have better hands so I could catch. Now you must be thinking, why is this guy giving us his you know, sports background? Because actually, that's exactly what Ramadan is for us. You see, for 11 months, that's our game time. 
Right, that's our game time where we have to perform the obligations of our faith every single day. Where we're expected to be a Muslim who worships and fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that he should be feared and in a manner that he should be worshipped. So when these 30 days come, it's an expedited skills camp for us where we learn to do things that we already know but we do them in a better manner. Because before Ramadan, we all know that we have to pray five times a day. We all know that we should open the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. We all know that we should have better control of our tongues and our limbs. We're all aware of these things, right? None of this is new. Nobody comes into Ramadan and says, oh wow, it's Ramadan, I don't know what it is, right? Every single one of us is aware of the obligations that Ramadan has and the expectations of Ramadan. So when Ramadan comes, we learn how to manage our time better. We learn how to become punctual in prayer. We learn how to pray on time and the way that it should be prayed. We learn that we have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is strengthened when we open his book and we come together as a community and we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when these 30 days are over and we come out of the skills camp of Ramadan, now we perform those 11 months with excellence. We perform our games with excellence and we win because we took the opportunity that Ramadan gave to us to better ourselves as Muslims and as in my case, as athletes, so we could perform at our sport. Our sport is being a Muslim 24 seven. And Ramadan is that skills camp that once you enter this skills camp, this skills camp for 30 days, never do you wanna de-excel. You never wanna go back and be worse than you when you were when you entered. Right, because the purpose of me going to a skills camp was not so I wouldn't get the starting position, was not so I would perform less than I did when I entered it. No, it's quite the contrary. We exit Ramadan understanding the limitless potential that we have as Muslims. Because we all know we have to pray. But Ramadan shows us the capacity in which we can perform our prayers with excellence. We all know that we have a book from God. But Ramadan teaches us the value of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how vital it is to the need and to the success and to the survival of not just our families, but also our communities. And the reason I began with this analogy was because my dear brothers and sisters, today is day seven of Ramadan. Seven days of this month have gone. One fourth of this month has passed us. Right? And so many of us, unless we have fasted in the months prior or the weeks prior to Ramadan, this first week is an acclimation period to where our bodies, our minds, our spiritual self is getting used to what Ramadan is. We're experiencing the fatigue. It's natural, we're human beings. We're experiencing the hunger. We're experiencing the migraine. We're experiencing the short temperness that we all have. And the next thing you know, the second week of Ramadan will be done. And then the last 10 nights come and we say, oh my God, where did Ramadan go? And then we'll start making the dua again. Oh Allah, allow us to see next Ramadan when almost the entire month has passed us. So the time is now to be vigilant and to understand the essence of the month of Ramadan so that another week doesn't pass us and we fall short on the goals that we set for ourselves before we enter this month. There's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man qama Ramadan imanan wahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. He said, whoever prayed at night the entirety of the month of Ramadan out of sincere faith and hoping for a reward from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, then all of his previous sins will be forgiven. There's a very important part of this hadith that I love so much, it's so dear to me. Right, where the Prophet Sallallahu says that he fasts and he hopes for a reward out of sincere faith. Like he's fasting out of sincere faith and he has a hope that he will be rewarded from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. My dear brothers and sisters, we know that we have two angels that record all of our actions. But when we're at home in our rooms, there's nobody watching. When we have access to foods, when we have access to our desires, right, the indulgences of the flesh, when we have access to all of that and we choose to decline that solely because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me and I'm not going to partake in these actions. That is sincere faith because no human being sees you. You have the limitless potential to do whatever you want, but you simply choose not to because you hope and you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you hope for that reward, that, that the pangs of hunger as they describe them. When you feel that, you know, that cramping in your stomach and when your mouth dries up and you get cotton mouth and you get that migraine, 
Remember that you're seeking your reward only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now you are amongst those who are qualified in this hadith, right? That you fast sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you hope for a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the reward the Prophet says? That all of your sins will be forgiven. So the first takeaway is sincerity in the actions that we do and having huthn al right, a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you will be rewarded in accordance to every migraine, to every cramp of hunger, to every ounce of fatigue that you felt, to every time you wanted to lash out at people because they upset you in a manner that was displeasing to you, but you didn't. But you didn't let yourself get the best of you because you remember you're hoping for a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then really understanding what Ramadan is. There's one hadith out of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hadith about this month that for me personally summarizes the essence and value and importance of this month. And I'm going to share this with you today. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded to an inquiry by one of his companions. Abu Rayra again narrates this hadith. He said, The Prophet used to narrate dreams for us when we would have dreams. And there was a companion by the name of Talha. He had a dream and he came to the Prophet asking for an interpretation of the dream. And he said, I saw two men, one of whom was a martyr and one whom had passed away. They both passed away. One man was a martyr and the other was not. And he said, Both of these men passed away. And in my dream, I saw the martyr entering paradise after the other person. Martyr, right, which is one of the highest accords that one can have in Islam. This person entered paradise second to the other person. So Talha came and he inquired to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, what does this mean? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, did he not fast the month of Ramadan after him? And did he not perform 6,000 or more prayers in the year? And in another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the distance between them is greater than that between the heavens and the earth. For the person who got to experience one more Ramadan. And my dear brothers and sisters, I think we forget that. That we become such creatures of habit, that we get stuck in our monotonous ways, that we forget the essence of why we're doing things. That sometimes we can become very robotic in what we do. I have to fast for 19, 20 hours. I can't eat. I'm not going to curse. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to smile. I'm going to go to the masjid. That is Ramadan. And we become this very robotic creature where we have to understand Ramadan is so much more than that. Islam is so much more than that. That the essence of this is allowing these behaviors to manifest in our character, to beautify us and to beautify our communities. So when the Prophet ﷺ said that the distance between these two men is greater than the heavens and the earth because this one man, got to, or one woman, right, got to experience Ramadan. So think of the thousands of sajdas you're going to make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to live another year. That you may have, be, you may have been amongst those that prayed during Laylatul and we know the reward of that one single night. So this person got to experience that. Think of the letters of the Quran that you're going to enunciate, right? I'm not talking about words, right? We know the hadith, the reward is per letter. Think of the letters that you're going to read and recite throughout that year, Ramadan included. And now think about the vast reward that is awaiting because we have been privileged and honored to experience another Ramadan. So as each of us leaves here today, we should feel a great sense of pride and we should feel a great sense of honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the majestic and mighty, chose us to be alive in this month so we could worship Him and so we could have our sins forgiven and attain a reward that is solely with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where the Prophet ﷺ said that every deed of man will receive 10 to 700 times the reward except fasting. And fasting is for me and I shall reward it as I like. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that. That there are two occasions of joy for one who fasts. One when he breaks the fast and the other when he will meet his Lord. This hadith, I think about this almost on a daily basis. For those that know me, know that I love coffee. I love the smell of coffee. I love the taste of coffee. If they had a cologne for coffee, I would put that on because of how much I love coffee. And literally, I don't want a date. I don't want water when it's time to break the fast. I just want a cup of coffee when I break my fast, right? And so literally, majority of the day, I will, I will think about the coffee I'm going to drink at iftar time. And that gives me so much joy. I'll be at work literally counting the minutes and I can take the sip of coffee. And subhanAllah, this hadith, I remember this every single day when I drink that first sip of coffee. Because it brings me such joy. I get so happy because I'm drinking coffee. 
And I say, SubhanAllah, the Prophet said, there are no greater joys than two joys, one for when you break the fast. And I'm thinking about how happy I get just because I get coffee, right? Coffee. And then the second, when inshallah, we get to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a very simple things, right? There's a simple things in life that give us pleasure. And I get this pleasure from drinking coffee. And when I break my fast, I can't imagine what the reward for each and every single one of us who observed the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have that glorified and that honored day when we get to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters, my sincere nasiha to you is to do not be a robotic Muslim that do not go through the actions of this blessed month in a robotic manner to where you forget the essence. You forget the essence of Ramadan and the great reward and majesty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed and the honor that is in this month. So remember why it is that you do things because Ramadan clicked for me as a teenager playing football because I was told that Ramadan is your skills camp. You're going into this camp so you can be better than you were last year of football. So you can be better, so you can be a starter. And I wanted to be a starter, right? I wanted to have more skills. I wanted to be faster. And that's exactly what Ramadan is. That once you leave the month of Ramadan, you are a better Muslim. That your skills that you already possessed are better than they were. And if you didn't possess these skills, that you now have a greater understanding of your own potential. So once that month is over, you perform at a level of much higher excellence. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله القريم والعاقبة للمتقين ولا أضوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم ما بعد Now that we've understood what the essence of Ramadan is, what Ramadan is and what it means to us, we also have to be vigilant and cautious of those things that may cause us to fall outside of those who are reaping the rewards of Ramadan. What do I mean? The Prophet ﷺ said that many people will fast and get nothing from their fast except hunger and thirst. And many people who pray at night get nothing from it except wakefulness, that they're losing their sleep. Why do I mention that? Because so many times, so many times we forget what it means to fast. That our, our, our very simple understanding is that we abstain from food and water. When the greater understanding is that fasting is for the limbs as much as it is for the soul. And when we talk about limbs, we have to talk about our hands and our feet and our ears and our mouth and our tongues and our eyes, right? Everything is a state of fasting. You know, when, a, when they comment on hijab, hijab is simplified so many times as a covering on the head. When hijab, right, is a complete lifestyle, it's the way that we behave, a hijab of our tongue, a hijab of our, of our physical limbs. And that's exactly what fasting is, that when we fast, it's not just abstaining from the food, it's abstaining from the cursing, it's abstaining from evil thoughts, it's abstaining from anything that would hurt other people and also hurt ourselves. How do we hurt ourselves? We hurt our souls. We hurt our souls, the speech that we do, the things that we listen to. And so to remember, right, 20 plus hours for some of us, those that are working, right, 19, 18 hours in this 90 degree weather that we're experiencing today. We don't want to go through this and then at the end of the day when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we realize all of this was in vain because we simply lacked control over the things that only we had control over. Because no one can control that which is between your two lips except you. Right? When people make you angry, when children make you angry, when your spouses make you angry and your co-workers make you angry, you still have to remember you're fasting. And solely that you do not want to just experience hunger because for every silence and every word not said is a reward waiting for you. So to be amongst those that qualify for this, we have to exercise and restrain. And we have to restrain ourselves. So, also to really sum up Ramadan. You know, there's many a hadith that tell us that he is not a believer whose neighbor is not safe from him. Right? We understand that if you have nothing good to say, that you should either speak good or remain silent. You know, these little things that we teach our children, all of these hadith, think about how they're all magnified and combined and they become one conclusive takeaway point for the Muslim. 
Because all of these hadith that we know growing up, all of them become applicable when we're in a state of fasting. So when we're not fasting, we don't let go of these things that we're taught. We actually apply them in a greater manner every single day for the rest of our lives. And that is exactly what the skills camp of Ramadan is. That we're already aware of these things, right? That don't hurt people with your tongue. Don't hurt people with your actions. You should pray on time. You should read the Quran. You should not lie. You should not steal. We know all of these skills as Muslims. But Ramadan comes, we pay a special attention to these skills. So when this month is over, we remember all of these little things. And now the takeaway for this khutbah, you've heard all of this thing, you've heard massive information, you feel a sense of pride for being a Muslim, you're excited that you're alive in the month of Ramadan, what can you do when you leave the masjid? Here's what we can do. Think about one or two short-term and long-term goals, right? There are so many clinical studies, research-based, that if you write down your goals, if you can visualize and see what it is that you want to accomplish, if you look at millionaires and billionaires and those that are in the stock market, whatever, if you ask them how they became successful, they laid out a timeline for themselves. They laid out something that held them accountable for them wanting to achieve their success. So my dear brothers and sisters, if you truly want to accomplish and be successful in this month and even the months after, you're going to do this for yourselves. Write down one to two short-term and long-term goals and set a date for yourself and tell yourself, I'm going to accomplish X, Y, and Z. I'm going to accomplish these goals because if we are likely to write them down, we are more likely to accomplish and achieve them. And your goals are respective to you and your spiritual needs and desires, so do them in an accordance. Lastly, self-honesty and accountability. We spoke about this just now, right? Time management. Time management in this month is key. Literally, it comes down to how is every single minute of this month spent? How is every single minute? Yes, micromanage yourself in this month. Hold yourself accountable. Because you see, when I, when I was a kid growing up, I always asked myself, how do brain surgeons do it? How do heart surgeons do it? Oh my God, how are they heart surgeons? Then I understood something, that they also have 24 hours just like I do. So whatever it is that I decide to do with myself, is upon me because every single person sitting here today also has the same exact 24 hours. So if we fall short on accomplishing our goals, there is no one to point a finger to except ourselves because we did not utilize our time. So time management and accountability. So my dear brothers and sisters, as you leave here today, right? Use your time wisely. If you're driving in the car, make the, if you're at home and you're bored, open up the Quran. Sit in gatherings. And that is the third point. Sit in gatherings that remind you to be your better self, right? You're in a masjid right now. You have a spiritual high. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being talked about. We hear mentions of the Prophet sallallahu Everything is great. Everything is craving. But when we go outside of here, we have to reflect. What are our outer circles like? What are the circles of our family gathering? What are our circles when we're sitting in family parties? What are the context of our conversations? Right, reflect on these things because we feel a spiritual high when we're sitting with people of spirituality. And why are they people of spirituality? Because they're remembering Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So be part of good company in this month and outside of this month. So just to recap, long-term and short-term goals, one to two, things that you can accomplish. Number two, hold yourself accountable and be managing of your own time because no one else will manage that time for you. And number three, in this month and outside of this month, be vigilant of the group that you choose yourself to be a part of. Right, and the group is it's not just your friends, it's also your family, it's also your spiritual group, your physical group, and whatever it is that you choose to be a part of. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He allows us to understand the blessings that are in this month, and that He allows us to understand the essence of this month and the blessings that are in this month. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are from amongst those who are forgiven in this month, who have all of our sins forgiven, and He makes us from amongst those who enter genital for those without hisab. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He eases the difficulties of all of those around the world that are struggling, all those that have passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow them to enter the highest levels of paradise and to reunite them with their family members in a gathering much more blessed in his company and the company of his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allahu malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya yuhu alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama baraksa ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. 
اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما عطيت وكنا واصرف عنا برحمتك شر ما قضيت فإنك سبحانك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا اللهم بلغنا فيما يرضيك أعمال لنا. إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالأذل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أقيموا الصلاة